broadcast. I want you to know that remember, heaven is real, that God is able to supply your needs. Praise God. something that God laid upon my heart pertaining to the fact about His development of making us who we are. I, I don't want nobody to get discouraged today because that your life didn't come uh, out the way that you thought it should be. I, I, I was talking to a man here not too long ago, brother, and he said, you know, he said, I'm really, he said, I'm really a, uh, an unfortunate sort. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, he said, I'm really an unfortunate person. He said, because he said, I was born and he said I, I didn't uh, have much and he said I've always been kind of cheated in life and I, I looked at him and he said you know he said it's a shame that he said that we can't select who we are and I, I said well what do you mean because he said if I had that choice he said I would have selected that my life would have been better and I would have been a rich man and I looked at him and I thought well there's a lot of people that maybe has a fence in their life about who they are you know, some people get mad at God because of situations. Uh, a lot of people, because that they have a hard way to go, they get bitter. And they point fingers and accuse God of cheating them in life. I've had people tell me that they uh, lost a loved one and they felt that they were cheated, that somehow God had robbed them and cheated them. 
of, of taking a precious loved one and they said it just wasn't right and God treated me wrong. Well, I want you to listen to me today. I want to clear up something about what God done for us and I want you to look at this very clearly because as I take you into this message, I want you to look how God defined that He had done our work in our life. And I want you to listen to me very carefully today. In chapter 64 and verse 8, the Bible said that in Isaiah, But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father, we are the clay, and Thou art potter. And it says, And we are all are the work of Thy hand. Now, I want you to listen to faith. God made us even before we knew we were who we were. Now, if you don't believe that, God knows us because He is the one responsible for creating us. We did not birth ourselves. Somebody said, well, what do you mean by that, Brother Bob? We did not birth ourselves. God did that through a miracle. Miracle birth of humans is a act of God. We say, well, it took mom and dad to come together in union together, and then the chemistry of the body went through the process of creating a child. God did that miracle. I want you to know God did that. No one is here today. I want you to realize because that you and I did it of our own works. We were products of God. And I want you to realize that Maybe some of you are not wealthy and some of you are not rich and some of you don't have what other people have and maybe in your heart you have objections about that. But listen, you need to come to some realization now that you're a believer in the works of God that you ought to just say, Lord, you have your way in my life any way you wish. Come on. You know what's wrong with people today? They resent things. And you can't do that, not once you become a child of God. Because when you become a child of God, something is added with that. And that's called wisdom and understanding of ways of God. Now, a lot of people that go to church would have been to church for years, but never has understood the ways of God. But it's time that Christians realize today that we are what we are because we have wisdom to know that God had a hand in it and we're what we are because God made it that way. A man said not too long ago, said, I'm down on my luck. And I thought, well, that's the way it is for you. But you have to take it under consideration that the reason why that you feel that way and are cankered that way in your feelings is because that if you was a Christian and you would have another view. See, the world resides on luck. But a Christian resides on what he knows or she knows that God does for them. Come on. Hallelujah. Get, get with me now. Just get with me. Just give me a few minutes. People today, they want to say, well, tomorrow, I want you to know that I just don't know what tomorrow may hold. A Christian ought to already have wisdom to realize that tomorrow is controlled by God and God knows how to treat His children. That's the reason why that there are so many people in the mully grubs. That's the reason why that there is so much ambition that's lost. That's the reason why that faith can't generate and the reason why that people can't have stamina and dignity in their life as a Christian. Because they're not realizing that they ought to confess that God is the head of everything and if God is the head of everything then God knows how to do things correct and you and I may mess it up but God doesn't mess up anything. See, Jesus never made it. Come on. Heaven and earth may pass away, but God's work never fails. You and I may be in trouble every other day. We may get out of one fix and fall into another fix. But that doesn't mean that God is limited to trouble. Because with Him, all things are possible. We need to learn it. You know the reason why Christians can't have joy? Because they're down on themselves all the time. God don't want you to be that way. Why, God doesn't have a hard-look church. God has a blessed people. 
The reason why people are always in, 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 without no victory and the reason why the, the children of God are always in some kind of opposition and they don't have liberties. It's because we've reduced the liberties. Because we have forgot that God is in charge of every situation. I have not made my situation. God has made my situation. And God said, I will not put up on any of you any more than you can bear because he said, I'm here to give you life abundantly. When Christians start thinking that they're going to fail, brother, that's against the structure of the way God has this thing planned. He said, Lo, I'm with you always. And I got church people calling me up saying, Brother Bob, it's all over for me. I said, how can it be when you've got Jesus working? I got people calling me up on the telephone and said, I'm sick. Well, this may be the end of it. I said, no. I said, this is just the beginning. What do you mean? I said, because he said, I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. I said, honey, it's not over until it's over. But I said, meanwhile, as long as there's life in the church, there is hope in Christ Jesus, for he is the hope of glory. Some of you need to take some uh, lessons. Not worldly counseling. Come on, you don't need that worldly counseling. You don't need a psychiatrist. They half of them don't even know what they're talking about. You don't need no psych- uh, psychologists. You don't need all these people. People every time a child uh, acts funny or, or does something that should be, everybody wants to lay them before a child, a child psychologist. Everyone wants to run today. They have to come in the world today. They want to run to sources. That's wrong. Christian, I'm going to tell you something right now. My Bible tells me, as saints of God, that in everything, take it to God in prayer because He's the source. You see, He's the mighty counselor. Come on. He's the mighty counselor. He's the everlasting. He's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. He's all in the world to us. And the trouble of it is, people, they want to say, well, who the source is? Well, I can tell you right now, Isaiah 64 and 8 says that it was decreed unto us that God, He is the potter, and that we are the clay. And the Word of God says this, and I want you to listen as it, as it states it. It says that we all are the work of God's hand. Huh? So the next time that the enemy tries to throw something in your thinking to cause you to think incorrect, you remind the devil that God is in the driver's seat. Every time that you get yourself in a situation, I want you to look to God. Or Roberts one time, he in his ministry, uh, back in, or I think it was back in the 70s. Or Roberts, there was a time that God spoke to him, and I'll never forget it, because he'd got on his telecast, and, and he, he, he made mention about God's miracle power, and he said that there was a thing that was going on in his ministry that disturbed him. And he built that prayer tower back in the latter part of the 70s. And had everybody going up there seeking God for the needs of people from all over the country that believed in God's miracle power. When they got sick or they got in trouble or they had problems come along, they would call up Tulsa and they would contact that prayer team. And the people would take the prayer request and go to God in prayer up at that a place where they assembled together. But, but Brother Robert said... And I'll never forget this. He said uh, that he was woke up by the Spirit of God late one night. And he said a trouble entered into his heart. And he said, he said, uh, God, why do I feel this way? And he said the voice of the Spirit spoke to him and said, uh, get up out of bed. And he said, and then go out and sit down in the front room. I thought I was the only one that ever done that. See, that's where I get most of all of my communication with the Lord. When I'm at home at night, I I, kind of get up there and and in the middle of the evening, when I get all settled in and all of these things get out of my mind and everything kind of is quiet, the Lord begins to speak. It pays to listen to God. He'll, He'll talk to every person. Come on, somebody said, well, does God only just talk to the preacher? No, honey, he'll talk to you and he'll tell you great and mighty things of who he is and what he is if you'll only listen to him. And I'll tell you, some of you would ever talk to God after he told you the wonderful things he can do. You would be a best person. Come on. 
I, I, I've asked some people, I said, God ever talked to you? They said, no. I said, well, you ought to start talking to him. Because I said, he'll tell you a lot. I, that's bad when Christians can't talk to the Father. Come on, say amen. Hey, my eyes often said, I said, you ever have a little talk with Jesus? No, I don't know. I just, I never had Christians, never had a talk to Jesus. I said, you'll start talking to him. So I said, bless God, it'd be surprising what he would say. Come on. I said, do you, do you know God can speak? God is live. God is real. He can tell you things. He can tell you amazing things. And most of all, He can reveal Himself better than any person can reveal themselves. Because He knows how to speak according to how you can understand Him. And He knows exactly when you're weak how to speak strength to you. It's the best thing in the world to talk to God when you're broke. Because you know what? He specializes in being able to tell those broke people how He can supply their need. It's best to talk to God when you're sick. You know why? Because He knows how to be able to tell you that I am the Lord thy God that He that thee. He can tell you that. He's got an information source in Him that is greater than anything man can receive. But I want you to listen to this. But all Robert said, He got up went out in the front room and he sat there and he said to him, he said, oh, he said, uh, I want to say this to you. He said, people that are out there are considering that I am the source. And God, and then old Robert sat there in his home in Tulsa, Oklahoma, there right up the street from Bay Clinic and he said, God, what do you mean they're saying that, uh, that they're not believing that you're the source? He said, that's what they are, that they're believing that I am not the source. He said, oh, they confess that I'm God. But he said, they really don't co consider me as being the primary source. You see, a lot of Christians, they take the power of God and consider that as just being an option as a Christian. They take the ways of God and consider that as just being a little bit of the ways of serving God. But Christians have to understand that, honey, God is the best above the rest. And that He is not just what we call secondary source, but He is the primary source of everything we need. And all Roberts, God spoke to him. To put out in his ministry, and at that time he had almost near, nearly better than over two and a half million people on his mailing list. He sent them out a little cardboard plaque that he mailed to two and a half million people for them to put up in their home. Then it says, God is my source. And when he, did you get one of those? I got one of those years back, back in the 70s. And he said, he put on there, God is my source, and he mailed that out. And I got one of those, and somebody asked him, said, well, oh, how come you did that? Because he said, I want Christian people, he said, that needs God supplying every need for them. I want them to realize where their power is coming from and where the main source is. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. You see, you cannot serve God in the division of mind. You cannot serve two masters. You have to come into one agreement. The church of God here today has to come in not just what we theorize and then what we truly believe. You have to cast out all doubt that God is God. You have to cast out all doubt that God is the main source. He's the head of everything. He's our all in all. He's everything that we need. And he is the potter, and we're the clay. And God does these works, not of our works, but he does it to satisfy himself. Why? Because he's God. And I want to say this in closing this message. I made up my mind that I'm going to drive this point home to people. That God is the source. God's power, spirit is the source. Come on, say amen. God's Spirit is the source of this thing. God is what 
is a spirit. And we must serve it how? In spirit and in truth. And I'm here to tell you right now, it doesn't come to us through the might of man. It doesn't come to us through the power of man. But it comes through the spirit of God. And until we start looking and whence our help comes, we'll never receive. Until we as clay begin to say, it's God that is the molder and fashioner of my life. Then I have to say, if we don't confess that, then we'll never become what God has intended us to become.